Hello, this is Haka Dabin, and I am I'm here with The End of Death, Season 2, Part 3. A hundred year favor. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you do not enjoy this video, then I guess there are many others that you can and go and watch instead. Let's get into this. Hundred year favor. What do you mean delete everything? I was told to get rid of the evidence. It's idiotic and you know it, Jared said as he clenched his fists. Like maybe we can and fix it. You can't just give up like that. Henry then turned around from her computer. It's it's what Ford told me. I just got off a call with him. Oh, and now you're following orders? Since when did Emily Young ever listen to her boss? Jared replied. He glared at the back of Emily's head until she finally turned and faced him. Emily could tell Jared was serious because he wasn't leaning on the door frame like he usually did. We have to get rid of it at all. It's what we were told. Emily's eyes were distant. Jared knew she wasn't all there. Half the lab cheered. The other half panicked and everyone's phones were ringing. Tony looked all too sm- uh, A gun D-3448 monitor. Just not a care in the world. I- No, I can't. Delete the files yourself if you want me wiped. Do it yourself. I'm leaving. Jared turned to leave. Wait, Jared, you can't just leave. I need help. Yes, you do, but not mine. Jared went to his desk, grabbed his computer, packed up some of his papers, and then left. Jared Helberg hadn't seen sight 2718 and up in about a hundred years. He never quite felt comfortable thinking about memories. He says being hundreds of years old. A year? Five years? A decade? All of this felt like a long time for him still. A lot changes in a few years. It's hard to comprehend a whole century of change. In that time, he'd moved around a lot, always working for the Foundation, but always in different places. Spent 30 years up in Alaska, another few decades in Vietnam, then a score in Oregon. He just left his station in Cal... Uh, which he had worked for at eight, at for eight years. <sighs> he was probably going to come um, back to the States soon anyways. His daughter was about to get one of those cybernetic enhancements he's heard about in the news. There's one thing his time in Site 64 taught him. It's to be is skeptical of any robotics coming out there. But that was supposed to happen in a few weeks. Now Jared was traveling for a favor. He abandoned his career hundred years ago, but he won't do that twice. He took a breath and then opened the door. Hello? Jared asks. A woman wearing a pair of headphones popped up from behind the desks. Are you Jared? And I assume and you're the person who called me. You forgot to give your name. Jared navigated to see if disordered desks and loose papers as he approached the woman. Yes, I'm sorry. I was... It was a strange day. I'm Joyce Michaels. Oh, you're Tony's sister. Joyce nodded. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense now. Sort of. Where's Emily? Joyce pointed behind her, back in the Um... She's been talking to Tony ever since this morning. Hasn't said a word to me. That sounds par for the course. She gets dramatic when she's stressed. Jared head for the monitoring In room. The, night, the light next to it flashed red at just how he left it. He knocked once before opening the door. He then recognized Emily at first, but then she didn't look in like she did a hundred years ago. She started speaking before she turned around. Joyce, I need a... Emily stopped once she knows Jared. 
Hey, boss, he said. Still freaking around with dead men? Jared? Miss me? Ellie stood from her chair. You piece of crap! Why the heck are you here? The friend called me and said you two needed a hand. Jared replied as he leaned against the wall. Speaking of, aren't you supposed to be in the fetal position, begging for death? First of all, I could hate my life and do something else at the same time, called multitasking. And second, that was not a public thing. Face it, we're stuck, and you have not been giving me confidence we'll get ourselves unstuck. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Face it, we're stuck, and you have not been giving me confidence that we'll ever get at ourselves unstuck. Joyce called from the next room. Jared couldn't help but smirk. How's Tony been? Feeling lively? God, even after a hundred years, you're still the same freaking person! Emily said. She sat down. She sat back down in front of 3448's computer monitor. Same could be said of you. Jared smiled out a little. Emily didn't return it. She turned back and resumed typing to Tony. You're still a coward. Still hung up on that? Jared walked toward, toward Emily. You abandoned me. And Tony. There's a long, long conversation we can have about who was in the right. I don't regret leaving. That's not why I'm here. Emily turned around again. Then why are you here? Jared looked at the ceiling. And watched. Oh, he thought for a moment. He eventually got his words in order and crashed in front of Emily so that they could be eye to eye. Because I should have dragged you out with me. So I'm going to get Tony out here first and make sure you have no reason to come back to this place. He said. And we took a Took a moment to really look Jared over. His face looked different, but it had the same smirk. His body was taller and broader, but stood with the same slump. His voice was lower pitched, but it was as unreasonably confident as it was a hundred years ago. You hate the fact you miss me, don't you? I'm feeling nostalgic already, he said. Shut up! Yep, just like old times. It took about half a day to catch her up on everything Emily and Joyce had scrapped together the past few weeks. It was a meager amount of new information, and most of it wasn't useful. Jared cleared out a spot on a desk from his computer and looked through some of his old files. What are you looking for? Emily asked. She peered over Jared's shoulder. Okay. Well, okay. So the one thing we're like 95% sure of is that if we can kill Tony like we, like we did with that girl, he'll actually die, right? Like, if you die in this state, you're just all the way dead. Right. I remember from my time at Site64 coming across Ah, there it is, Jared said as he opened the file. Emily pushed Jared out of the way. What is it? SCP-3560. It's Robot Purgatory. Ow, that hurt my ears. Anyway. Hmm. Might have to make a video on that another time. Anyway. Elaborate. Aren't you reading it? Jared said as he rolled his eyes. Sort of. I can see from I can't see from here anyways, Joyce said from I'm next to Jared. Fine, Jared turned to her. So you know those new 
Oh, Anderson Robotics bodies they got everywhere now. Well, Anderson Robotics stuff works strangely. Surprisingly enough, most of our automatons are pretty ripe to act as vessels for immortal or people already. They end up using the soul into the machine, so it's as if they've already they're already operated by people. At least that's what they used to do. I can only guess that they used something similar, but not exactly the same for their exoskeletons. At least finally looked behind her. Wait, wait, soul? Soul, consciousness, electrical activity represents thoughts. From what I can tell, those are all interchangeable. It's a part of us that said Omega K keeps alive, Jared answered. I still can't find a part that has to do with tel- Only. Emily replied, he's already half dead. We can't stick his soul in a suit. I'm not finished. Although I'm kind of hoping you're wrong about that. See, if an AR bot robot dies and ends up in 3560, I'm assuming the main reason we greenlight the boot to a series for public use is because we are ranking on the fact that people aren't dying anymore. So we're not sending civilians there. Wait, 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 Emily said, still refusing to let Jared sit in front of the computer. Are you suggesting that we take Tony, put him in a robotic suit, kill him, and then fish his dead robot soul out of a forest somewhere in Oregon? Turning back in his chair. Don't make it sound like that's the dumbest plan you ever heard. You thought I'd have killing a lighter was a good idea. We're not going to drag Tony's body to Anderson Robotics. We don't know if we'll lose connection to his consciousness if we take the body out of the machine. Jared stood up. You're not even willing to try it? Come on, I know some people. I could get the body in. What if we get a suit, bring it here, and set it into conceptual space? We don't know how much that machine transfers. We know it gets the basic idea right, but a lighter and a gun are pretty simple. How does this thing work as a concept? I don't know. I haven't heard about these things until today, Emily said as she stood up. They've been all over the news for weeks. I don't get out much. Guys? Emily and Jerry both looked down at Joyce. She had a small smile across her face. The kind of smile you have when you know you're about to say something stupid. So those suits operate usually with an entire soul inside, right? Well, what if we got to with only half a soul inside, and then got Tony to fill in the other half? Like, maybe there'd be a soul vacuum he'd occupy? Evelyn looked at Jared, and then back to Joyce. Half a soul? A soul vacuum? Yeah? Joyce shrugged. Evelyn nodded. That sounds reasonable. I mean, it doesn't, but it's par for course. Jared also nodded and sat down. Yeah, that makes sense. Except, how would we get half a soul in one of those things? We do what we did when we he sent stuff to Tony. We put a suit, put the whole soul in, and then half kill it. And then we kill both the souls once they're in the suit, and then get at them out. Out of rope obatory. Wait, so how are we going to get the souls in the body? Then took her seat again. I'm like 90% sure it will become obvious once we see what it looks like inside the conceptual space. Things either make sense on either side or no sense at all. So who's going in? Emily and Jared fell silent. Everyone knew it was going to come down to this. If they were going to try Ida, someone needed to be the test subject. Someone would have to bank on this as being essentially right, or be willing to be stuck with Tony for possibly the ever. I'll do it, Joyce said. 
You you're sure? Jared asked. I'm sure. He's my I have he's my brother after all. Emily pushed I mean, sorry. Jared pushed Emily aside so he could get back to his computer. Emily just kept looking at Joyce. You okay, Emily? I, I mean, not really, but I just, I don't know. I don't want to be left alone again. Alone? Well, I know that you're willing to deal with the, the consequences of this failing, but I don't know if I can. I mean, I'm not stopping you. You should go after her if you want. I'm just, well, I'm being mean. E. I'm being selfish. Emily stared off at her shoes. Joyce put her hands on Emily's shoulders. Emily? What? I'm coming back. I promise. I looked up again. The two stared at each other for a few more seconds before Jared turned around from his computer. <sighs> All right, Joyce, you're due for a new body in, in a week. I managed to get you in cheap because, well, People only favors. Thanks, Jared. I'm looking forward to it. Bring, bring, click. Hello, this is Skylar Credential Portfolios. What can I help you with today? I'd like to sell my shares in Black Moon LLC. One moment. Hello, this is Greg Kirkland, Secretary for 054. Hi, this is Erica Dunders from Site 34 Accounting. Could you route me to 054? I'm afraid he's busy. I'm afraid he's busy at the moment. His daily meeting with the rest of the council doesn't end for another three hours. This is quite important. Could you tell him that, uh, how secure is this line? This is Overwatch Command, and before you ask, I probably have higher security clearance than you do. I know an overseer's daily schedule. Right, right, right. Well, if you could tell for that his, uh, pet project from a few hundred years ago looks like it's been reactivated, I don't think Site 2718 is empty anymore. One moment. He says he'll be with you in two minutes. Just needs to get his personal online in the office. <clears throat> and that was part three of season two of The End of Dead. If you like this video, then please leave a like on the video, oh, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you did not like this video, then you just wasted almost 20 minutes listening to me read about, about this. It appears that things are moving at a steady pace, and that maybe there is a soul in Robot Purgatory. Anyway, I will be going. I will see you tomorrow with another video. I'm not sure what uh, and I'm going to do tomorrow, but it's probably going to be something relating to End of Death or another video relating to Project Paragon. Or maybe I'll do something not SCP related. I do know I've been on quite the SCP print um, binge lately, and I'm hoping to change that. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow.